there's one thing that I see business owners get wrong time and time again, and this is how they choose to pay themselves from their business. It's far more complicated than you might think, but I'm going to simplify this for you and show you the simple ways that you can take money out of your business and some of the pros and cons associated with each. Let's get started. So we can simplify this to basically three ways to get money out of your business. Assuming that you are running some sort of corporate entity, whether it be a company or a trust, most businesses are run through a company. Is There's basically three ways for you to get money out of your business. The first way is a wage or a salary. And the benefits of taking out a salary or a wage is that you have the ability to take a fixed earning uh, from that business. Secondly, the business will usually be paying uh, pay-as-you-go tax, meaning that you don't have to worry so much about your tax savings because we're, made, we're on an enrollment system and you're essentially treated like an employee. So it can make it far easier for you to manage your tax liability. And the third thing is that treating yourself like an employee allows you to ensure that you're paying money to your superannuation, which many business owners neglect when they're self-employed and they're paying themselves in other method, methods outside of a salary or a wage. The last factor is that by paying yourself a salary or a wage, in many instances can increase our borrowing capacity and allow us to build wealth faster without having to complicate your financial position by involving your tax returns and financial statements for the company, particularly if there is debt in the company. The downside of a wage is that it doesn't provide you with a lot of opportunity to tax plan. You will end up paying your marginal tax rate. And as you continue to pay yourself above $200,000 a year, you're going to lose about half of your income in tax, which is not the ideal situation. So the second way that we get money out of a company is a dividend. And a dividend is only taken out of a business when it is profitable. And we need to acknowledge that profit does not exist until a financial year has ended. You may have an accrued profit throughout the financial year, but from an accounting standpoint, a financial year needs to be finished in order for a profit to be truly available. And the reason for this is because business is volatile, right? Just because you produced a profit up to six months in the year, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can have a profit by the end of the financial year. But the benefit of having a dividend is that essentially you have a lot more flexibility around how you do that, particularly if you have your business owned by some sort of trust structure that provides you with discretion over how you distribute that dividend to other beneficiaries in that trust. Now, the benefit of a dividend is that one, it gives you flexibility. Two, it doesn't have to pay workers' compensation or superannuation contributions on that dividend. And three, we can also get what we call a franking credit because your business has to pay corporate tax on that profit and therefore you can carry that tax that is paid and provide that to the beneficiary that you are distributing that dividend to and there can be some great tax benefits associated with that. Now, the downside of a dividend is that if you're paying dividends throughout the year, which for many of our clients we advocate they do, it essentially sits on your balance sheet as a director's drawing until the financial year is done. And the downside of that is that it can convolute your profit and loss statement. And it can often lead many business owners in a position whereby they end up with a substantial tax liability because they did not get the right advice around how much money they needed to set aside for tax. This can be a big issue, but that can be solved by having the right tax plan. And how much money do you need to put aside for tax for any drawing that you take out of your business? And then the third option is a loan. And in some circumstances, a loan can be great. And the idea here is that we are taking money out of the business. And if we do so, it needs to be done on what's called the Division 7A Related Party Loan Terms. And what that basically means is that we can't take money out of the business and derive personal benefit without there being a commercial relationship in place. And you actually need to pay an interest rate back to the company for the money that is borrowed. Now, typically speaking, that loan is borrowed on a seven-year term, principal and interest, at a predetermined interest rate. Now, at current interest rates that we exist at the moment, that rate is over, so it's pretty hefty. But keeping in mind, it's going from one hand and going into the other. Um, so it's, it's not that big of a deal. It's not like you're paying 8% to a third party. Now, this can be great because it gives you the opportunity to get more money out of your business, having to pay the total tax. Um, so potentially that provides you with, in some cases, 15 to 20% more cash that you can then use to do certain things with. The benefit of that is that potentially you can use that to acquire investments outside of the business, and that can provide you with the ability to compound your wealth. The downside of doing these types of arrangements is that it does create future tax liabilities that you need to be prepared for. And the potential risk here is that we've seen many businesses take Division 7A loans out of their business utilize that to fund their lifestyle because they begrudgingly don't want to pay tax. They end up kicking the tax tin down the road and they end up paying a whole lot more tax and ending up with cash flow issues down the track. 
This can be a very slippery slope. It can be very dangerous unless you've got a proactive and typically a capital appreciation strategy in place to make sure that there is a net benefit associated from doing this because kicking the tin down the road will eventually catch up with you. So these are the three ways you can get money out of your business. And this is basically just one of 40 strategies that you can use to improve your financial performance and get on track for creating financial freedom faster. This forms part of our financial performance scorecard, which is the top 40 things you can do to improve your financial performance and kick some goals in 2024 and beyond. So if you want to complete the score, click the link below and let's see how well you do. You'll get a customized report with some actionable insights that you can implement. that will help you improve your financial results and start kicking some more goals. So let's see how well you do.